new updates in the old world, we managed to capture a couple of new city sites. So we will be able to get up to six cities. And if we can get six cities up to legendary culture, okay, that'd be like six victory points plus another 12. So how it works is when you have a weak city, you get one point. When you have a developing city, you get three points. When you have a strong city, you get six points. And when you have a legendary city, you get 10 points. So if we can get another wonder or two and a few of these cities up to legendary, I actually think we have a victory on the cards here, which could be super interesting because we can achieve that without really needing to go to war. I'm continuing to build granaries over here. Now, the nice thing about the granary is that they will provide increases to food and growth here for these farms. The growth is nice because we can grow more population and work more workers, right? We can build workers faster, which is a really, really great outcome. One of, if not the best outcomes that we could have asked for. My slinger that's been sitting here on the shrine of Epidemic, getting free experience per semester has leveled up. I think taking focus on archers can be really useful, allowing them to crit. My husband is now ill. He is only age 34 and ill provides only a 10% chance of death, so he'd probably be okay. Let's get rid of the monkey. He only cost me two legitimacy and let me tell you, right, he causes problems. So I can choose between my two families. I can choose between the Urchet and the Yam. I think I'm going to choose the Urchet family because the Yam family are extremely happy with me and this would allow me to get the happiness level of the Urchet up to a higher tier thus just generally getting me better combat strength on their units and lower maintenance. Nice, and we pick up a bunch of culture, a bunch of happiness, and I just so happen to get a bunch of experience, which will level me up. I am the governor of Yushara, and I can choose to get wisdom, courage, or discipline. Discipline would get me the most total resources, but being able to increase my science right now could be amazing. While this city does not produce that much in the way of science, all future science gains would be reflected upon this, and I kind of need that science pretty bad. I'm going to start fortifying units, particularly melee units, in and around my capital, I think. And I'm thinking about building fortifications between me and Assyria. In particular, I think some fortifications along this line and in these mountain ranges could buy me a lot of time if they were to invade. My relationship with Assyria is okay, though. I'm going to gift dyes to the city of Sururab because I want its culture to grow faster. And that'll be a nice boost to the culture. I could, in theory, gift that to other people and trade it. I think using it inside my cities to make these cities grow faster culturally could be really useful. Looks like we have discover a Carthaginian. Now we have a lot of spare orders right now, so I think it's quite good to spend orders to improve our relationship with them. Getting mercenary units are, is actually extremely useful. So I think I am going to go ahead and buy a hundred wood to fulfill this offer. That way I can get this mercenary unit. Mercenary units are unique because they can use a general from any house. We also got a strong cultural event in Sururab. And I think my training is my weakest resource right now, so getting a boost of training would be nice. Looks like we've got the Ta of God, Ammonius Saccus. So my heir is a politics or philosophy student. He could become loyal, getting plus two discipline, global gold bonus, and happiness with the Kushite paganism. Or I could gain some civics, and he would become a Neoplatonist, which would be wisdom and cash. Now, right now, he is educated, so he has pretty damn good wisdom already. I think pushing down that direction of making him a scholar could make him an amazing heir. So I am tempted to become a Neoplatonist. My relationship with Kushite paganism is already fantastic. So let's do that. Assyria have sent me a diplomatic mission. I can upset Assyria to gain courage or I can gain relationship with them. I think I'll just gain the relationship with them because that'll lower the probability that they want to go to war with me. And that is a good thing. Also, we have a fantastic area for forestry over here, which is going to really help us out, which is making me reconsider potentially using this line over here as a a more urban thing. Chop it out, build a little bit more of a city in here. Could be a choice. I think it could also be worth my while to get another scout at this phase of the game. That'll be something I'll be considering. But yeah, you can see pretty much anyone from any house can take control of a mercenary chariot, which is fantastic. It's also a light chariot, which I believe is a unique Egyptian unit. Yeah, it requires developing culture, horses, and a stronghold. So in theory, if it's in a city with a citadel, we could upgrade it to a mounted lancer. So this is a very powerful unit that we picked up to the point where it might be worth it to park this on the the thing of academic so that I can get free experience. Oh, my husband is now severely ill. 40% chance he, li he lives would be nice. So I can do a trade deal with Carthage or gain charisma. I think I'm going to take the charisma gain because my charisma is already ridiculously high. The city of Ushara has an insane amount of civics. What I want to do is try to push that into getting us even more farmers in here. I think if I get a bunch of farmers, that would give us a lot of growth, which will allow us to grow more citizens. The more citizens that we can grow, the more we can use these civics to actually make useful 
thing. So this is like a long-term play if I go for the growth. It'll take one turn to make a farmer and then three turns to do a festival. And when that festival completes, I'll get a boost of growth and happiness in the city. And this city is already heading into positive happiness. So we could start to see some insane resources coming out of here. I mean, it's already making 900 gold per turn. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we can pull this out. The city of Surarab is a little bit more balanced in its yields. It's making a nice balance of stuff. It's got strong culture. I think building walls to reduce the discontent in here is a reasonable move. So we'll get those walls going. And then I think getting a rancher over here will be fantastic. It provides three growth, 15 food, a science, four cash per turn. Very nice. I'm also going to rush the walls to save. Well, you know what? I'm going to rush the rancher. Spend the 340 to instant rush the rancher because I have a ton of spare civics. So doing a little bit of rushing, I think makes sense. Makes more sense than dragging. Sovereignty has been discovered, giving us access to tyranny, constitution. I don't want a lover, so I'm going to take discipline first. No, thank you for your proposal. Let's have a look at which law we want to pass. Tyranny would give us a lot of cash. We already have a lot of cash, whereas constitution would get a science from urban specialists. This would improve our relationships with our families, but that's only because this guy's an orator and this law would give plus 20 opinion to orators. I think I would much prefer to go for constitution, which will improve our relationship with statesmen. This in conjunction with freedom will lead to specialists yielding a lot of resources for us. We've also passed our fourth law, which means we can now place strongholds. And this was actually the Queen Aminator, our mother's ambition which gets us plus five legitimacy and that'll be our third ambition finished. I can totally go on to pick a new ambition such as control six forums which is a very achievable ambition so I'm going to go ahead and take that. All of these are awesome choices for us like I want all of these. I do kind of agree that groves is a great pickup here because we could get gardeners. It would let us unlock some pretty late game resources as well as giving us access to like things like camel archers, war elephants but I do feel like we need to shore up our early tech with things like like a barracks or two, maybe get some archery ranges. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for the cheaper techs, right? We can two semester military drill to gain barracks. So I'm going to focus on that. We finished a settler in Moreau. It would cost 120 growth in here. Could I build it faster somewhere else? I could build it five turns in this city because they only cost 80 here. So I'm going to build a settler from the city of El Tuina and then let my capital work on something else because settlers are just getting expensive in here. If you build it out of the same city over and over, it gets more expensive in that city. I'm going to go ahead and build a stone cutter here because this will actually nab me a little bit of extra land for the city, which makes me quite happy. The city is very constrained in terms of its land. I'm going to press control to force march this settler over to the city site. Probably don't want to force march it all the way there, actually, now that I think about it. But I want to force march it basically there and I want to choose which one I want to settle on. And I think it would be kind of nice to settle right here to get access to all four four of these pearls immediately. So force march to here. Then we're going to found a trader city so that we get boosts to nets. And this will potentially massively increase the happiness. So let's go ahead and found the Wawat traders. Boom. Now I positioned a builder over here. Now he's from the wrong city. So he will build slower than he normally would were he in the right city, but that's fine. We will get a builder from Ushara over there, maybe someday, or the city will just build its own builder. I think we'll go straight for the forum to get a little bit of progress on that goal, maybe right after a worker or two. Yeah, I think a pair of workers out of the city seems like a reasonable start to it. And I'll get a worker out of the city of Ushara as well to, to send over there to help. My husband has survived, which I'm quite happy about. I'm going to go ahead and take 120 culture in Moreau. That will get us much closer to legendary culture, which means closer to... I forget what I was going to say. Whoops. Events pop up and get you confused. Closer to legendary, closer to a wonder, I think. That was what I was going to say. Who's going to be my ambassador? This guy's quite young, meaning he will level up in the role and potentially get better stats over time. So Harcio Tef, he will give me foreign opinion, which is quite useful. All right, the builder is here, so it'll take him three turns to build this, whereas it takes this guy four. But I don't mind as long as I get it online. Plus, there's an insane amount of culture going to be coming out of these, which is fantastic. I think I'm going to paper over this quarry with a stronghold in my capital. This will allow me to build a Medjai Archer, and that is something I definitely want to do. Oh, this only provides experience to infantry. Well, that was me being stupid. Let's get you out of there. Put that slinger back on. Eagle Eye is a great promotion for marksmen, actually. Oh, and as is marksman. So not only is he long range, he ignores distance penalties and he has a 10% chance to crit. This is like a really damn good archer. We should totally try to keep this around, level it up and keep it safe. One of the things I really like about the combat in this game is how much value there is to promoting units. I think I would like to finally go for monasticism to get polytheism. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a couple of barracks here in Suraramp. 
after I built my strongholds, the goal is to get a couple of military infantry on those spots. So I'll start the production of a pair of warriors to park on those to level them up. Although I definitely need a lot more scouts and workers um, to use up my orders because now I have a glut of orders and I'm not able to spend them fast enough. So getting workers out, I think, is the play um, going forward. I'm going to rebuild a lot of my land. Ooh, the nice thing about farms on Marsh is they actually produce a little bit of wood, making these farmers higher value. We might need to go to war with Assyria here to prevent a victory. Pie Face the Foolish has died, which sucks. We could let my prince become a Pathfinder, and it is a fantastic ability to get. So I think the Pathfinder is a great ability. Absolutely under no circumstances can my prince convert to a new religion. However, this would lose us the elegant trait, and I am willing to lose the elegant trait, even if that means a civics loss in all of my cities and a not insignificant one. Oh, we have found where the vandals like to hang out. I think we would need quite a few more boats before we could mount an expedition over here. So I can make my prince become gracious or prosperous. I think I like the idea of being prosperous, lots of gold, but getting plus two charisma could be really useful. So I'll take that. Oh, wow. They've got this like super surrounded. It's not a very big or useful island, but three pearls and a fish. I mean, I wish I was taking over this island. We would need to anchor multiple ships together to do that, though. My next settler is complete, and I think I'm going to orient this city towards my enemy over here to the left. The other option is to orient it to the right on a defensive grounds. But if I orient it west leftwards, it shouldn't be too difficult to build a defensive front line against Assyria and potentially also launch an assault into Ekalatum. All right, let's pop down a barracks here. Now, we could put officers in these barracks. What a barracks does is it gives the city a 20% production boost. So I think I'm going to have Surarab be the place that I produce my melee infantry, and I'll have two sitting on these leveling up. The question is, do I want to build officers? Now, the basic officer is two training, three sides, four gold. The next one is three, four, four, and then four, five, four. So it would be a significant boost to the training in the city, which allow me to produce more military. I don't know. I'll think about that. Something I will do is try to move some tiles into Moreau so that maybe I can extend Moreau down here and take over this hill area with Moreau. That might be something we're attempting. Let's prepare the guards for any unrest. We really don't like religions other than our pagan religion. We shall oppress the faithful. Our religion is the only true religion. Our gods are the only true gods. We're going to found a city for the Earthjet artisans because it'll bring them up into positive opinion. We definitely want another pair of workers over here. And once this blue worker is finished with this fishing boat, we'll swim him over there to try and make something of this city. I have quite a few plans that I want to do here, mostly involving building along this coastal area to try and push for more of a front line with the yellow player, who I would like to invade and take the city of Ecolatorum if I could. I'm going to get rid of one of my farms and instead build another granary because I prefer the growth from the granary because it doesn't require a specialist. And the growth is going to be fantastic for getting enough citizens to pump up a lot more specialists in here. I'm going to start building my forums in my cities, prioritizing it to finish that ambition. Let's get a minor specialist in this city. Even though we don't really want the training, it will allow us to expand our borders. And I think that's something that we want to start doing is expanding our borders out. I do like the idea of keeping three mines in here. Three farms, three mines, three quarries. And I might put the three quarries over here just so the city has basic rural infrastructure to maintain itself because the city will start demanding goods. And while cities don't need to be self-sufficient, I think it is good to have because then if I lose a city that's like producing all of my resource of an X type, that's bad, right? And I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna just not let that happen. I super don't care about any religion but my own. So I'm just gonna be like, I don't give a shit. Be disappointed with me. you like, oh, you built on our holy ground. Uh, don't care. Didn't ask. Also, building apartments. How could you become that which you hate? Easily. I did it for the money. So it looks like the governor of Moreau has died, which means we need to deal with that. We also have some Medicaid descent. So let's see if we can deal with all of that. It's a good opportunity to exercise our military a little bit, if in not ideal circumstances. First things first, let's go ahead. Uh, so we, we dealt with that rebel. We'll kill him next turn. Let's make a governor of Moreau. I want someone relatively young, and I don't really have an option for that. I think I'll just take Nebopolezer because he's been around forever. He's been around since like the start of the game. I'll just put him in charge. That'll be fine. I've got a ton of events to deal with. We've got to choose research. Land consolidation would give me the grove. 
which would be fantastic. I don't need the 800 civics. You can only have a maximum of 2000 and I have 1200. I'm making like 150 a turn, so I'm, I'm good. I think I'm gonna go for the metaphysics because this will unlock the archive and this will let me churn through the tech tree really quickly when I start building these. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Well, it would be really bad if my husband was vengeful towards me, whereas I don't mind if the general of one of my chariots is vengeful towards me. So I'm gonna give this special armor to my husband. Can't really deal with Egypt being mad at me right now. So I think the best move here is to make sure that Egypt likes me and she will just have to deal with poor relations with her later. We got a developing culture event in Kandruka. I do like the idea of there being an athletic tradition here, which would suit my faction really well. So let the elders have their archery. Perfect. My son has completed studying philosophy. He could be a zealot or a judge. I don't like the idea of losing anything. So the zealot, a zealot's unit can't die if it has more than one HP. It can also enlist its next kill, i.e. recruit the unit that it kills. If it's my leader, I can use my training to hurry production, which gives me a new use for training. Quite valuable. Whereas if they are a judge, it allows us to upgrade improvements and we can also hold court which sounds like a lot of fun to hold court so I think we'll make him a judge it's a little bit more well-rounded the zealot is really good for war but I think we'll go for judge because holding court sounds fun and we just unlocked monotheism and polytheism and I think the obvious choice here is polytheism so we can build all of those shrines which is one of our ambitions we have enacted polytheism which has made that religion very happy for me another governor has died I'll put my prince in charge of this city although I might prefer them to work at Kandruka. I mean, I guess Moreau is actually a good place. I guess I was wrong on that event. That had already happened. Whoops. Discontent levels are now dropping in this city. Let's go ahead and get the Forum 3, which will lead to the Forum 4, which will give us positive happiness. Unless I want to focus in another area and get a lot more growth, which I mean, I'm not against. Plus one growth per semester for a farmer. It'd be a very quick build. That'll lead to a lot of growth down the road. But I can finally build all these shrines now. Oh, thank goodness. Honestly, Manichaean stuff isn't the worst thing ever, but we do need to remove that descent. So I'm gonna prioritize that because Manichaeans have um, mythology, which does give me extra culture from shrines, which could lead to some really good stuff down the road. Also, we're about to hit legendary culture in this city, which is sick as hell. Let's build the shrine of Amani to get extra civics. That's gonna be nice. We're going to build the Shrine of Sabo Macal for the growth. Hell yeah, Shrine of Sabo Macal. It's so awesome. The amount of, oh, we're going to have so much juicy shrines everywhere. We've got Christian descent in El Tawina that we need to deal with. Looks like we've got some deaths. I don't need iron, but I don't mind trading away a little bit of civics because I have so many for the friendship boost with Babylon. Let's trade with Carthage to see if we can improve relations. Oh, I could put Prince Pisacar in charge of being my chancellor, which would get me a big boost to growth across my empire. 4.2 growth per city is big. On the other hand, if I put him in charge of Kandruka, the amount of culture and gold we would get out of that would be absurd. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't, while this is awesome, I don't think it compares even a little bit to what he could do in other roles. I'll put a Maki the Builder in here. It'll be a small growth penalty, but I will be able to still do jobs with him, like family gifts. So I could forge an alliance with Babylon by getting a marriage with Babylon. I could also marry internally. I think a foreign marriage with Babylon could be very fruitful for me here to have them as my ally because we flank Egypt and could easily invade. And carving up Egypt between us would be very useful. We got a legendary culture event in Ushara. Do we want camels? Do we want ore? Or do we want game? So camels are just an improvement. Ore would give us a decent amount of training in this city. Game would give us food and growth. I think I would prefer ore. The governor of Surarab has leveled up. And I think I'm going to make them righteous to give the city plus two happiness. Seems like a reasonable move. We need to suppress the rebellion in Tawina. We need to get rid of that Christian descent. Oh God, we had an illegitimate son. At least he's 25% Babylonian, I guess. I'm going to take the schemer into my nation because she could theoretically serve as my spy master. Once I unlock the ability to have a spy master, that is. It would cost me 17,000 gold to build a Heliopolis. Now the advantage of the Heliopolis is that it would give me plus one order per shrine in all of my cities, which is insane. It's also plus two victory points. What else could we build? We could build the Hagia Sophia, which would be a lot of happiness. I think the Heliopolis fits our build really well. 
And so I am going to build it right here for 17,000 gold. Boom. I'm also going to sell off a huge amount of iron down to about 600 and a huge amount of food down to about 600 because the potential for us to buy another wonder in the near future does exist. Yeah, 21,000, 25,000, 34,000. We need to be saving stone and that means building quarries and mines, which means I think this will be a quarry city and not a woodcutting city because we have a lot of woods over here that we can make. So let's start making the quarries. I am going to buy a build a shrine of Sabumakal in here because it's really nice. Plus four growth per semester is really valuable for this city. All right, let's have a look at what we could get now. It would be nice to get the archer. It would be nice to get the groves. I do like the idea of getting navigation to get access to colonies and surf them. Navigation would also lead to coinage, which would allow me to build a lot of gold production in some of my cities, in particular the cities that already have pretty decent gold production. So I think I'm going to go for navigation because it leads to coinage and I will set coinage as a goal. And I think I'm also going to set citizenship as a goal because I want to get divine rule so I can adopt my pagan religion as a state religion. And that will give me plus one happiness from my shrines. In fact, I would say that's even more important than coinage. And so, yeah, okay, so I'll go for navigation for now. Looks like a Christian clergy member wants to join our country. I tell you what, you can come come say hi. You're going to join a part of our clergy. Let's focus on building these archives up. Ooh, they take stone. Cancel. Let's do festivals. Try to get more stone cutters to bring a little bit more stone in. I'm getting some good scouting on Carthage's land. And I know basically everything about Assyria now. Still exploring a little bit over here in Babylon, but I'm getting a better picture of how the world looks. Also, one thing I really like about this map, you see this gray area in here, the, the extra gray? That's like the actual border of the map. The map isn't square. It's kind of all janky, you know, like there's a straight edge bottom, but it is also can be kinked. Like there's a little kink in the map right here, right? You know, I haven't even discovered the whole map. It's exciting. I also like how mountains poke out of the map. You kind of know, oh, like there's mountains over here, but you don't know exactly you know, what the land around there looks like. Dude, we're up to 76 science per turn, which is insane. They got a new leader in Babylon. On. We sent some gifts, we got some people converted, we lost a little bit of legitimacy, it's all good. I will trade orders for wood. I have a I have a decent number of orders spare. That will get me up to the point where I can get a trade mission. What I would really like to do is to get Hypatia to join my clergy because she's really, really good. And she might serve me well in that role. I don't know. I'm going to pay them off so I don't have to owe them a favor or rather let them pay me off so, so they don't have to owe me a favor. So I don't want to be spending stone right now because I want to save up for more wonders. Wouldn't mind building the Via Rectusuk. Colosseum is okay. The Pantheon would be really nice to get. Super nice. So let's see if we can't get some more quarries going. Let's get a pair of farmers in El Tawina. The nice thing is these guys actually produce wood and that'll lead to more growth. More growth will lead to more citizens, which will lead to more specialists. And we get the feedback loop slowly increasing our science rate. Nice, we managed to achieve the cognomen of the able. Combination of a variety of things that we have achieved has brought us up to uh, a, nice, a nice level. You become the wise by discovering technology. You become the great, I guess, just by doing anything. You become the invincible when you kill a bunch of units. Pretty cool. This is a prerequisite for a target attack, so I'm going to go ahead and grab Spearmint. While I would like Odians, they do cost stone, so Spearmint it is. I'm kind of in a position where I think I'm okay to piss off Egypt here. And honestly, if Babylon is at war with Egypt, this is a perfect opportunity to potentially start a war. I think that might be part of the upcoming play. I went through all my cities and made sure they started building the most basic level of forum as well. So in six turns, I will finish that ambition. I would love to build the Pantheon and the Hagia Sophia. Building both of those would be incredible. Also, I totally miscalculated how victory points are calculated because I was looking at somebody else's numbers. It's literally just one victory point per culture level per city. Yep. So it'll take me some time. And I think expansion into Egypt might be the play here. I'm going to end the peace between me and Egypt. That will upset some other players, which I'm fine with. I also want to start looking into getting onagers and archery ranges going. Okay, Hypatia has become a priestess, which is part of the pagan clergy. She can now do sacrifices to the gods. She has a better chance to become the religious head. I get better opinion from paganism. Very cool. Looks like we've got a legendary culture event in here. Nabopolesar is a little bit old, but I think getting a little bit of extra science out of the city is nice. Oh, we finished a quarry, which would allow us to potentially get a chariot or a warrior and a slinger. I'm going to take the warrior and the slinger. So we have a choice. We could do serfdom, which would make my people slightly less happy, but give me more orders which I have enough orders in my opinion, or I could go for colonies, which would allow me to buy tiles with money. And I like the idea of being able to buy tiles with money. It gives me a lot of flexibility in how I develop my cities. We now have six laws passed.
we only need to pass two more and we can hit a very important level, which is the ability to build our super strong. I think having the ambition to control three legendary cities is entirely doable. Looks like the governor of Surarab has died. Let's put Anlamani, the younger, in charge. And in our new coastal city, we're going to put our prince in charge because look at all those yields he gets. So much money, so much culture. Really, really nice. He's also a judge, so we can hurry specialists with money, which is absolutely what we're going to do because getting those fisher specialists for these luxuries would be amazing okay i can't quite afford the Aya sophia so i think i'm going to go for the via i mean it's really nice but i think i'm going to go for the via rectisuk getting a free caravan every five semesters is pretty good it also costs less stone than some of the other wonders which means I can have a little bit more time to build up my stone economy. I think it's time we started training some apprentice officers in anticipation of a large military expansion in the city of Moreau. So I'm going to look to train all the way up to an elder officer, or at, at the very least, I'm going to train an apprentice. That's a nice boost to income there. So my goal is to get these wonders under construction, and then I'm slowly beginning the transition into a militaristic economy. I also want to build a road along this thing, and that's going to be the invasion route into Egypt. So I, I have quite a bit of work I need to do to get to the whole like battle line. Harbors are awesome, but I think I would rather unlock the Onager as a ranged siege unit. Uh, let's see. I could become prosperous. We could sell some ore or I could just get experience. Let's sell the ore. We have plenty of it. Becoming prosperous will increase our money per turn. We finished a festival in Ushara. I could get charisma. I'm age 44, so I'm probably not going to live too much longer, but it would be a lot of civics, especially in this city. So I think I will take that. We've got a developing culture event in Maru. We could get 80 happiness. I'm going to take another discipline because it's a so much cash from that. So I'm building a road all the way from Kandruka down through to the river in El Tuina. A question I have is can sand even hold a road? No, it can't. But I can get a road most of the way at least. And that means units will just have to cross that desert to get through, which is fine. Let's get an apprentice acolyte. I think that's a powerful unit. Although I don't necessarily need more culture in here. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world to get a handle on. I could also build more miners to get more training to actually build a military, which would scale well if I were to move into barracks as well, which I might do. I'm trying to be very thoughtful as I expand and build my empire and be very careful about how and where and what I'm building. This is definitely the kind of game that requires a lot of thoughtfulness, a lot of care, a lot of crowbarring your empire around corners, thinking across multiple interconnected systems. So Priestess Hypatia, I can influence her. And I would also like to her to maybe consider doing a sacrifice to the gods. I can spend food to get improved happiness. And El Tuina is probably my most discontent city. So I'm going to tell her to do sacrifices in there. It's a 75% chance to reduce the discontent. And I will take that deal. I'm going to demand tribute from Egypt to see if I can force them into a diplomatically inferior position and make them scared. And my move for Moreau has actually ended up working out. I've managed to build out the city's influence along this mountain. And when I place a hamlet here, I'll be able to place another hamlet here and start constructing a small urban center over here where I can have more of the city's stuff be. Let's quickly squeeze out a worker in Moreau because I definitely am feeling the crunch of not having enough workers to get all of the things that I want to do to get into position for the war with Egypt. The Assyrian king has died. Oh... Egypt has started two wonders and Babylon has started the Hagia Sophia, which is the wonder that I wanted to build. We could gain incense in Ushara, which seems like just a straight up win for me. So I'm going to take it. It will upset Kushite paganism, but the religion loves me. So I'm not worried about that. Let's see. We could get a new court minister. I think a court scholar could be quite helpful to boost our science. And we got Taharka the scientist. So Den wants me to adopt Manichaeism as my state religion. I will absolutely not. You may be disappointed of me. That is fine. You can pay me for the land, Moses. Thank you very much. I definitely feel like this city should be specialized towards making cash, but a few extra miners to build our units faster, I will take. So this basically counts as a road. I'm wondering, can I build a road through a marsh? You can't build road through marshes. So that's important information. When I hold down the B key, you can see my road network. So what I need to do is to extend it through this mountain range. Or, oh yes, we have naval crossings. I'm still going to put a, a path through the mountain range just for the sake of it though. I think it's still valuable. All right, we've got a road heading through the pointy mountains. I'll probably build an extra road going up this way into Moreau. So we have a road through which we can invade, which is good news. The only one that has been built is the Pantheon. And so that's what I'm going to try to build next turn in terms of late game wonders. All right, it looks like our offering to the gods worked. Let's send pearls to the Wawat family because that's something they really like. 
that will get their opinion nice and high. Stone has become absurdly expensive, which means in order to build a Pantheon, we would need like 39,000 gold. Now we are making 2,000 per turn, as well as 200 stone per turn. So we can bring this cost down really fast. I'm now known as the Just Awesome. Another upgrade to my Cognomen. We did complete the six forums. I could level up my science ability or get some other bonus. I think leveling up my science ability is, is pretty damn good, but it's, it's becoming less important than getting happiness, I think. I'm gonna accept tribute from Egypt, awesome. Christianity just spread to Moreau. I think the thing to do is to promote unity between different religions. I think everyone can get along and we don't need to be enemies. I'm definitely gonna pick up citizenship now. This will also give me access to the courthouse, but mostly I want divine rule and legal code. Oh. We got a strong cultural event in Kandruka. Kandruka can gain the office of efficient taxation or I can give them autonomous rule. Can't choose production, can't hurry production, but they get a lot more science and gold per population. I think the office of efficient taxation is a totally reasonable choice. The thing I love about the orders system for this game is that it forces you to make difficult choices. Okay, the Pantheon is down to 34,000, which is a lot more affordable. I can sell some iron and some food. I could in theory sell wood, but I'm gonna need a lot of wood for building military units later. I reckon we can get the Pantheon if we could just hold out for another turn or two. I think though, we're gonna to have to see how that unfolds in the next episode whilst we prepare for war and build wonders. I wanna thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.